Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I've got three steps to help you fix that anterior pelvic tilt that you're struggling with. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve the aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall improve your performance in the gym and outside of it. So it really doesn't get much better than that. Go ahead and click it. Ready? Let's dive into this one. All right guys, the topic of the day, anterior pelvic tilt. Today I'm gonna to be showing you three steps, a systematic mobility-based approach to correcting your anterior pelvic tilt for good so that you guys don't have to struggle with any of the residual aches and pains or things that come along with the uh, effects of anterior pelvic tilt, that knee pain, that low back pain, those things are all associated with anterior pelvic tilt as well as the fact that it just simply kills your performance when you're trying to output more force in the gym. So if you have anterior pelvic tilt, this is something you really wanna get corrected. If you're not sure what I mean by mobility-based approach and a systematic approach, I want you guys to drop by the description down below and take advantage of the seven-day mobility training challenge. This is a free mini course in which I teach you guys what it means to take a systematic approach to mobility training and overall how to improve your mobility. And I give you even a little look inside the things that might be kind of off inside your body currently and things that you might think are normal but really aren't and we need to correct because they're killing your performance or putting you at risk for injury. So take advantage of it, it's completely free. Sessions are 15, minute long, 15 minutes long and you do not need any equipment for it and it's all yours. So down in the description, you guys can grab that. Without further ado, let's talk a little bit more about the actual mechanisms that are causing your anterior pelvic tilt. Now, usually when people talk about anterior pelvic tilt, they kind of mention the structural part of it, which, you know, obviously there's the pelvis, we got the hip in there, we got the low back, that stuff all tied together. But they really focus more on what's going on at the musculature. Oh, it's your psoas, it's shortened, and your glutes are inactive or underactive. And I'm not saying that's completely wrong, it is part of it, and that's something we do need to address and look at. But the true way that we want to address anterior pelvic tilt is through addressing the structures first. If you don't fix the actual foundation, you're never gonna fully fix the structural or the surrounding structures around that part. So we wanna make sure that first of all, we're looking at the hip joint itself. A lot of times when people have anterior pelvic tilt, it's because they lack hip extension. So the ability to reach the leg back behind you in, imagine walking, imagine running. If I lack that extension, what I'm gonna need to do in order to ensure that I can still reach that leg behind me is tip the pelvis into anterior pelvic tilt. So now I've got this arch constantly in my lumbar spine there that is giving me extension but I'm also leaking a lot of force there and putting excess force on that lumbar spine, which is why we see so much back pain associated with anterior pelvic tilt. So we need to, first of all, address hip extension. If we do not have hip extension, there's a great likelihood that that alone is what is causing our anterior pelvic tilt. It's also what's causing our hip flexors to be more active and our glutes to be more underactive. So if we can go right to the source through the structure itself and address that, that will be our first target. Then from there, we can start to look at the other soft tissues that surround, okay? Now what's going on with the musculature? What's going on with the fascia in those areas? And that's where we're gonna go second. And finally, from there, we need to look at the actual motor patterning and coordination because one, it might be a structural issue, but the main thing that also could be throwing that off is if I just move wrong constantly. If I'm constantly unaware of my pelvic positioning and I'm not engaging the musculature in a way that I should be that's creating stability and organization of my spinal column, then 
I'm also constantly going to be fighting this battle. So it's kind of a double-edged sword here. I need to address the structures. If the structures are off, if I lack that hip extension, that's going to be the main problem and source in the first place. If I don't move well, then I'm going to be feeding that loop altogether. So I want to make sure that we look at both in our time today, and we will do that. And I'll give you plenty of examples of how to do that. So let's go ahead and start and getting into some specifics here. All right. As I mentioned, the very first thing we want to do is address the joint itself, the hip capsule. So here I'm using 100 pound band to loop around the post, make sure it's sturdy enough to hold that. And then I'm stepping in it like a climbing harness. And what we're going to use the band for is to address the hip capsule itself and help pull the hip into extension while supporting the pelvis here. So there's a couple things going on. Doesn't look like much, but a couple things here. I want to make sure, first of all, I take a nice deep step back. So you'll notice my base is a nice triangle shape. So I have the base of my front foot fully extended there, three points of contact. So first metatarsal, fifth metatarsal and heel. And then I'm reaching back for the, basically the small toes, middle to small toes of that back leg there. So that's where I wanna feel most of my pressure in the back leg at full extension. Now I am trying to straighten both legs out, but I first wanna make sure that I'm able to get the tailbone tucked with the glutes engaged. And I'm flexing the glutes five seconds at a time and releasing to help restore that hip capsule here using the musculature around the joint as well. My abs are also engaged. We want the glutes, we want the abs. And you can also do this from a kneeling position to get a little bit different um, feel and stimulus here with the knee bent versus fully extended. Both are important, so you can work both to help restore that position. Be sure to give this one at least two minutes per side here. Next, we're gonna go into what's called a couch stretch. We're still looking at the joint capsule here, but here we're using more of the muscle dynamics to help create that positioning that we need. So we wanna start with level one here in a low position. One foot outside the hands there, one shin right up against the wall with the knee right in the corner. So start here, flex the glutes, engage the abs, make sure we're not arching the low back in this position. It will get a little bit more challenging because we are gonna go more vertical here. So after a few rounds of flexing and releasing the glutes in that lower position, you can bring it to a more upright position, resting on the knee or putting something in front of you to help kind of support yourself so that you're not fully upright, but still uh, a little bit more vertical than we were in position one. Same deal here, flex the glutes, release five seconds to 10 seconds at a time, and we should feel a pretty good stretch. Most people are gonna get caught in level one or level two here, getting caught in a stretch by their quadriceps and their hip flexors. Now, our rectus femoris, that center quadricep, actually doubles as a hip flexor, which is usually why we feel that one first, kind of limiting us. But once we can get past that and get a little more vertical, we wanna really pay attention to the glutes and abs playing a role here to get myself upright without arching my back to do so. So once again, we're making sure we have full hip extension to get into this position. If you wanna make it a little more advanced and get into those hip flexors a little bit more, lean away from the leg that's up against the wall, trying to go directly to the side there. Once again, spend about two minutes per side on this position to help really restore that hip and work the fascia. Next, we're gonna go into some direct work of the soft tissues using a soft ball. So here I'm positioning myself to massage the glutes here and help restore the ability of the glutes to contract. The cool thing about this one, if you stand and flex your glutes as tight as possible before doing it, then do one side and then repeat that test, standing and flexing the glutes as tight as possible, you'll actually feel an immediate benefit and the ability to flex tighter on the side that you re release through self-myofascial release in that softball there. 
So do that little test, give it a try. But what I'm doing is searching the tissues right around that hip joint. So I wanna go in a C shape around the glutes, kinda of coming up high and then down low and just kinda of moving around searching for tender points. Here I'm working the TFL. This is a common area that overworks when the glutes are underactive. And that's because it's an internal rotator and external rotator as well as hip flexor. So it gets quite a bit of work when things are not going well with the glutes there. So check both of those areas. If there's tender points, we wanna make sure we spend some time on them, flexing and releasing, letting the ball in sink in deeper. Next, we're gonna work the psoas, and it's that line from the ribs down into the pelvis about two inches off the belly button. I'm gonna first of all just lie down and try and open everything up so my right arm is fully extended, my left arm is fully extended, and I'm trying to create space between the ribs there and the pelvis and let that ball sink in as deep as it is able to go. So I'm trying to just first relax as much as possible in that position. Now I can move it closer up to the ribs or I can move it lower down in the pelvis right along that line. So it pretty much follows the line where the obliques and abdomen meet. And that's where we wanna be working to get to the psoas here. So you'll see me kind of shift it a little bit to search the range and see if I find anything. One thing you can do to help floss that muscle through the pressure of the ball is actually curl the heel toward the butt while you're in this lying position here. So you might feel a pretty interesting um, sensation when the ball is on the psoas. It almost can run right down into the pubic range. So just be ready for that. It might be a little bit unusual at first, but know that with the work of the softball, this can actually go away and restore back to normal. So we do wanna spend some time here actually restoring those tissues, reworking the fascia a little bit, getting them to relax, getting them to open up, and making sure everybody contracts and contributes the way that they should in the positioning of our pelvis. The last of the areas that we're gonna use self-myofascial release on with a foam roller is gonna be rectus femoris. As I mentioned earlier, that is a double action muscle. So it's a quadricep that works extension of the knee, but it also acts as a hip flexor. And here we're gonna check the full range. So I'm doing a nice pressure wave to roll the length of that quadricep, which sits right in the middle of your thigh. So if you could draw a line right down the center, middle of your thigh, straight into the knee, that's pretty much where rectus femoris sits. Run that whole length, first of all, just kind of searching for any discomfort or soft tissue restriction, anything like that that you find. And when you find those areas, what you can do is start to target them a little bit more. So when you wanna target that range a little bit more, what you're gonna do is instead of the pressure wave, actually spend some time doing a little bit of side to side movement with the leg curled. So I'm extending that quadricep into full extension, giving it a big stretch here, and then rolling across it perpendicular not going right along the musculature anymore. So we go from rolling out dough to actually you might get some lumpy feeling, kind of a thuddy feeling. Try and let the muscle relax so that it sinks into the muscle, that foam roller a little bit deeper. And here I'm showing how to actually check that TFL with the foam roller. So you can do that with the softball or the foam roller as well. All right, so we've addressed the hip joint and we've addressed the soft tissues around it. Now we have to look at the actual core organization and stability. One of my favorite ways to start doing this is through a glute bridge. It's one of the easiest ways to assess how things are working around the pelvis here. So what we should feel is when we rise up to the top here that the hips are driving as high as they can to full extension, so there's no crease at the hips there, with the knees pulling away from one another. The feet each have three points of contact, so first metatarsal, fifth metatarsal, and heel, a triangle base on each foot. And when I lower back down to the mat, my lumbar spine should come flat to the mat. This ensures that I'm using the combination of glutes and abdomen to control my pelvis. It's a tag team effort here. The glutes are the major players, and if the glutes aren't firing as well as they should, you'll usually get cramping at the hamstrings or quadriceps that are overengaging to get into that position. So this is something that we need to rewire and just focus on the glutes 
firing to lift the hips and drive the hips up as high as possible, pushing the feet directly through the floor. So I like to start in these supinated positions where we're on the back because we can use the floor as a nice reference. The next one I show here is a contralateral position, moving the um, dead bug position with contralateral reach here. So once again, as the leg extends out, this is really what we're looking at. Does my back try and arch as my leg goes to full extension or do I get my glutes engaged as I reach the leg out and my quads engage as the leg extends out straighter. That's the real combination we're looking for. So you should feel your glutes pulling the leg down to the floor and then the hip flexors pulling the knee back up toward the chest. That's really the combination that's important to us here and restoring stability at the core. Once you become proficient at the supinated positions, we can move to some sideline positions. This is one of my favorite. It's a bent knee side plank here. So I want my hips driving as far forward as possible with the knees pulling apart from one another. Imagine it's your glute bridge that turned over sideways here essentially. So once again, we should be feeling a lot of gluteal engagement and that's the main reason we go into a sideline position like this is to get glute med and glute min engaging as well as glute max. From there, we're gonna transition into pronated positions. So planks, bird dogs, things like that. So here I'm working on bird dog to show anti-extension, reaching out the arm and the leg, bringing them together in the middle. So we're working contralateral again. Once again, challenging the core to control the position and the movement. I only wanna extend that leg back as far as I can without an arch in my back. So I reach out till I feel those glutes flexing as tight as they can. The quads are engaging to straighten out the leg as much as possible. And then I bring it all back in and reset and try again. Remember, we're re-patterning your movement and your coordination here and the control around your core. That's the biggest thing, the stability of your core and its ability to come from one position into a nice neutral spine and hold that position without compensation. Next, we're going into a kneeling position and working from tall kneeling. So you can see we're building it up here. We went from supinated to, to sideline to prone and now to kneeling, half kneeling, and we'll eventually finish with standing here. But this is a seiza to sissy, I call it. So it's a seiza sit and then coming up into a sissy. It's a great way to coordinate the glute engagement to drive the hips up. The important thing is the lean back in this position. We want to make sure that we're not fully kneeling tall in a straight line, but we're actually requiring our glutes and abs to work together to hold a slight lean over our feet back behind us there. You're going to feel those quads working a lot, but focus on the glutes in the top position of this movement. If you're having trouble feeling the glutes in this position and coordinating it to get that hip drive that we need, attach a band to a post here and use the RNT effect of the band. So we're actually helping our body activate the glutes in that top position. You will need your toes tucked in it so it's not exactly the same going to that full range of motion. It is a smaller range of motion. But the tall positioning here with the band pulling around the waistline, almost as if it were at your belt line, that's gonna help you engage the glutes driving into the band so that we have full engagement as much as possible. And this is another way to progress this exercise so that you can get a little more resistance from it and get a little bit stronger in this position. Still working from this tall kneeling position, we can add another stimulus through a paloff press. So I'm in the tall kneel, my goal is to maintain the hip extension, so I don't want to feel myself shying away or putting that hip crease back in. I want to stay as tall as possible, kneeling in this position, I'll also feel the abs engaging. But here we're doing a little anti-rotation as well as anti-extension in this position to get the core working in multiple ways here. When you're ready, take a step out and start to perform this from a half kneeling position. The thing we want to focus on is the glutes engaging in two ways here. The leg that's down, the hip is driving forward, so we feel our glutes pushing into the front of that hip, using that to stabilize. 
From the front leg, our glutes are engaging by opening the knee toward the small toes, but maintaining three points of contact through the foot. So this is our base that we wanna really establish in this split stance positioning. The abs engage, and from there, I'm working once again on anti-rotation with that band pulling across me. All right, from here, we finally earned our way to a full lunge position and a standing position. So this one looks a lot like the hip capsule exercise that we did, but now we're using it with reps, okay? So we're able to actually combine the mobilization of our hip capsule with some strengthening at the same time. That should help us keep that back glute engaged. Once again, this is very similar to our half kneeling position where I'm keeping the glutes engaged by opening the knee on the front leg toward the small toes. And last but not least, some loaded carries. So it's important that we know how to maintain that core structure and stability when we're loaded up. Here I'm showing a double kettlebell hold. Once again, just working on the alignment. Three points of contact from the feet, as we say before. So we have that tripod foot, the quads are engaging, the glutes are engaging, the abs are engaging, and from there my upper back and shoulder blades with my chin tucked towards my Adam's apple. That is the alignment that we want through our spinal column to produce good force through the floor in a nice strong position here. And we've built you guys up all the way to this point. Once you do some double sided carries, getting used to having equal weight on both sides, then you can also set down one of the weights and perform the same exercise in a unilateral fashion so that you're challenging yourself from side to side as well, making sure that your body doesn't wanna shift out to the side to create a stabilized position. We need to be able to hold that structure. All right, and there you guys have it. A systematic mobility-based approach to improving and completely fixing and resolving your anterior pelvic tilt. And if you guys are still unsure about what I mean by mobility-based and systematic approach to it, once again, drop down in the description there and grab the seven day mobility training challenge. It's seven days of free mobility training already programmed out for you, 15 minute sessions, no equipment necessary, and it will teach you that systematic approach that we wanna to take to overall improving your mobility for the long run. It'll also give you that look inside right now to see where you stand compared to maybe where we need to be to optimize your performance and eliminate any of those things that are putting you at risk for injuries or current aches and pains that you might be struggling with. So take advantage of that. If you guys like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below. And if you know someone that struggles with anterior pelvic tilt or has anterior pelvic tilt and you just wanna give them a little friendly nudge, let them know this is the direction you gotta go, then make sure you share that video with them. So thumbs up if you like the video, share it with a friend and help them out in the same case here. If you guys have any questions, drop it down below in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have about what we talked about today or just let me know a big thumbs up down there, drop a hi, whatever you wanna say down there. Leave a comment and let me know what you're thinking. And last but not least, if you have not already, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, we're putting out videos showing you how to resolve the aches and pains, prevent the injuries, and overall optimize your performance in the gym, on the road running, and outside of it in your daily life and activity. And it really does not get much better than that. So jump on it. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. I'll talk to you guys next week.